Welcome to the Stogie Geek Show, episode 88. This episode is sponsored by Mr. J's Havana Smoke Shop. Located here in Rhode Island, they have an outstanding selection of premium handmade cigars. And by the Havana Cigar Club. Located in Warwick, Rhode Island, it's a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. And by Debonair Cigars. Visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair. Buy some today and get a little debonair. And finally, by Ocean State Cigars. Try the Jay Grotto series, including the Connecticut Shape Silk and the limited edition Jay Grotto Reserve Lines. Visit them on the web at oceanstatecigars.com for a full list of retailers near you. Welcome, everybody, to episode 88 of the Stogie Geek Show. And um, today I'm your host, uh, Will Cooper. And um, no, there has not been a Stogie Geeks mutiny. And no, I did not uh, take over the Stogie Geek Show. Um, we actually had uh, Stogie Santa, Mark Jr., and Paul all had external conflicts. But uh, filling in this week, uh, we, we brought him back, is Seth Geis from Seth's Humidor. Seth, how are you today? Coop, I'm doing great. I'm always doing well. Thanks for having me. Excellent, excellent. And um, we're actually going to start off, the, we're going to have a special guest today. It's Mr. Gabriel Alvarez of Coots, which I'll introduce in a moment. But to kind of lead into things, I'm smoking one of Gabriel's um, uh, cigars from Coots. It is the Miro Special Edition Lancero which I will get into uh, during the show. We'll have Gabriel talk a little more about that. Um, but before I kind of get started with that, um, I just want to say that the interview with, uh, is sponsored by Mr. J's Havana Smoke Shop. Um, on March 22nd, Mr. J's will be having their March Madness sale. The sale will be discounting uh, items similar to the annual tent sale that many folks are familiar with, but they'll have some newly um, added closeout items, so it's well worth checking out. Um, they'll also be scheduling a Monday night at Milzoni's coming up featuring the Pure Soul Cigar Company. And folks may know that's owned by Robert Wright. Um, he will not only be in attendance, but he will also be playing his sax. And I've heard he's very good with that. Tickets are $25 and are available at Mr. J's. And then on March 21st, excuse me, April 21st, Mr. J's will be hosting a cigar dinner at Milzoni's. The event will be first come, first served. Uh, while tickets are available, there's a 35 guest maximum. Tickets uh, will go on sale at uh, $50, and you get them at Mr. J's Havana Smoke Shop. That includes a gourmet meal and three premium cigars. So, Gabriel, uh, welcome to the Stogie Geek Show. Thank you very much. So before we kind of get started, I'm smoking a cigar I'm about to light up called the Miro Lancero. Um, can you tell us a little about the blend of this cigar and the story with this one? All right, well, the Lancero is basically, um, it's, it's not even a line extension of our Miro line. Uh, it's one of our core lines in Coots. It's, uh, it was a special edition we did um, based solely on that, that original blend of the Miro, which is an Ecuadorian Sumatra with a Nicaraguan binder and Nicaraguan and Honduran in the fillers. Um, everything's made in our own factory in, in Honduras, uh, just outside of Danli in Jacaliapa. That, uh, the name of the factory is CHT, Compañía Hondureña de Tabacos. And the, the story behind the Lancero is actually a little funny because um, I want to say maybe three months Four months prior to IPCPR last year, I was on a Skype call with our factory and, and just um, messing around with our blender and, and just joking around and everything. And, and in Cuban form, we were shooting back and forth, and he told me about how good he is and everything else. And we were just joking around, and I told him, listen, you know, you're, you can't be that good. You, you don't have a lancero. You can't make me a lancero. <laughs> so so he started cracking up, and, and it was a joke, uh, an ongoing joke with us for about two months. About a month prior to IPCPR, in one of my master cases on one of the, the shipments that we received, I get two naked bundles of 25 lanceros each. And I just started laughing automatically, and I and, and the little note on, the, on one of the bundles said, call me. So obviously I knew who that was from. And I gave him a call, and I told him, what's, what's this? And he goes, well, you told me I couldn't make you a lancero. Uh, there you go. Enjoy. <laughs> so so I, he's like, well, they're fresh. 
go ahead and smoke a couple of them now. Enjoy them. Share them with John and, and see what you guys think. And um, so we lit one up and everything else. And, yeah, it was still a little green, but there was some excellent flavors in it. And um, and I gave took my hat off to him and gave him his props, uh, his due props. So excellent. That's how that Lancero came about. Now, the reason it came out to market was because John in his travels, uh, well, John Gonzalez, if, if you guys don't know, John Gonzalez um, is the VP of our company. He basically runs the United States operations here, and I work under him as the operations manager for Coots. And uh, John Gonzalez was, was in New England visiting some customers up there, and he saw that Lancero still had a little bit of movement over there and, and talking to one of the store owners. He says, yeah, we have our fair share of, uh, of clients smoking smoking Lanceros on a regular basis. And um, then he went to Texas, and he saw the same thing in Texas. So he came to me, and he told me, hey, that Lancero that you have, um, you want to release it? I'm like, no. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and he told me, yeah, you know, why don't we do something with it? You know, what do you think? What, what do you think we should do? And I'm like, well, if we're going to do something that's, you know, we just launched basically we we had just we hadn't even fully launched we weren't even an IPCPR yet and um we had just started shipping orders about a month prior on on our regular lines and i said we're we're a little young to to be coming out with a limited edition anything so let's let's um let's put it on the calendar for end of the year release and let's let them age let let's let them sit there for a little bit let them get better and uh we'll come out with something small and it's exactly what we did. We came out with 500 boxes, which we still have a little bit if anybody's interested. Uh, any stores that carry our lines um, and anybody that wants to carry our lines, we, we don't limit to anybody. But um, we just did 10 count boxes and we said no catalogs. This is brick and mortar exclusive, um, 10 count boxes, special edition, and that's all it is. When we run out, we run out, and then next year we'll think about something else. And that's exactly what we did. Excellent, excellent. So kind of taking a step back, Gabriel, for folks who may not be familiar with um, Coots, uh, maybe you can give a little background on, on what Coots is. Uh, oh, because you, the brands have been around, from what I understand, for a while, correct? Yes. But they're, they're new to the American market? They're 100% new to the American market. And um, what happened was that uh, our parent corporation is um, Promo Tobacco out of Europe in Spain. And they happen to be about the fifth largest distribution company of tobacco products in Spain under, you know, and, and in Spain, tobacco's tobacco, cigarettes, cigarillos, cigars, premiums, short fillers, it doesn't matter what it is, it's tobacco. So we're actually the, about the fifth largest company in Spain right now under the, the tobacco distribution. Um, and they decided to expand our factory in, in Honduras. And we moved out of Don Lee because, you know, there was some relationships that were built while, while they were there and they decided to come to the United States and open up a completely brand new distribution arm for the U S with, with our cigars. Now promo tobacco has been around for about, I want to say in its entirety, 14, 15 years now in the European market. And the factory in Honduras has been around for about seven or eight years in the European market. Um, so having our own factory, it's, it's a big plus for us to be able to launch this, this, this distribution arm in the United States. And what happened was when John went on board with them in end of 2012, if I'm not about October, early November of 2012, he had resigned from my father's cigars. He was working with them. He was the VP of, uh, of international sales and, and catalog sales for them for quite some time. And, um, when he resigned from them, he he really didn't have any direction on where he was going to go and he was he was he was approached by the owners of the company they took him to Europe showed him the operations over there went to the inter tobacco over there saw the operations how they worked and then they took him to the factory and showed him everything over there and what they were doing in order to be able to accommodate for the United States to be part of this uh, grand scheme of things at that point and they had just purchased i want to say it's about 10 acres of land in Hakaliapa, just outside of Don Lee. This is, um, if you're coming from Tegucigalpa, you have to go from Hakaliapa into Don Lee. It's the last city or the last town right before Don Lee, the entrance to Don Lee. So we're, we're basically 
six or seven miles outside of the entrance of Danli, and you have to pass by our factory in order to go into Danli from the Tegucigalpa route. And um, they have built a beautiful, beautiful facility there. And I've gone there a couple of times already and worked on certain things. And this place now has the ability from, they were making about a million cigars, 1.5 for the European market. Now they have the capabilities of doing over 6 million cigars a year. Wow. Yeah. It was, it was a huge jump for the company. And, and the good thing about it is that it's, it's ours. It's, it's, it's nobody else's, you know, so we have a good, a good leg to move forward in the United States. Yeah, Are you had, still making more cigars for Europe rather than U.S.? Well, what happened was for the for what, what they're smoking in Europe or what they were smoking in Europe before and what was the company was used to making was a lot of short filler products. Okay. And, and they only had one premium cigar line, which was the Miro. Miro. And the Miro line basically, um, and I know probably I'm jumping the gun here on a question or something, but. That's okay. It's, uh, it's it's um it's kind of like a homage to um to our founders uh, Ramon Zapata's favorite artist Joan Miro and he's big into art and everything else and he decided to release the sign in Europe and it did fairly well in Europe and when John came aboard he he was seeing the way things were and knowing the American market the way it was uh, he decided to go ahead and tweak certain things and adjust things for the American market funny thing is that all these adjustments that were done were also adapted into the European blends. They're doing incredibly well over there now. I guess the European palates are starting to change and they're starting to more, more, they're, they're starting to smoke more like Americans. It's that rapper, that Sumatra rapper, I think is oh, really what it is. Rapper's incredible. Incredible. It's the rapper that really, you know, when, whenever you look at, you know, kind of making that cigar, which is going to go really well, the European market and the U S market, I think Ecuador and Sumatra rapper is the way to go. Was the Gordo added for the specifically for the American market? Yeah, the Gordo wasn't around. The six by sixty wasn't around for them. They had, I, I think they had maybe like twelve vitolas being made for the European market. And the closest thing they had to the Gordo was what they call a pequeño, which was like a four by fifty eight or something like that, like a nub. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm not getting in, infringing or anything like that, but. Um, but that's basically what it was. That 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 vitola size and. Um, and that apparently does very, very well in Europe. Now, you have two other lines. Um, one is called Tabacarera Zapata. I think right. I've said that right. What's, yeah, what, right. what's the meaning behind that name? And um, tell us a little about that cigar. Well, Tabacalera, you guys know in the industry, it's Tabacalera's a the house of cigars. You know, it's, it's right. factories. It, it's referred to that. And Zapata, uh, contrary to popular belief, it's not a woman's shoe. See, that's what I was thinking. That's why I asked the question. <laughs> Cigar House of Women's Shoes. It was Cigar House Women's Shoes, direct translation. No, no. It's uh, it's actually our founder's pro uh, last name, Zapata, Ramon Zapata. Oh, okay. So he, we had released the line um, for him, basically. And, and he, he founded the company. He has his own line, basically, under the company. And that's our Connecticut. That's our mildest cigar. And that's been in Europe for about two years now, two, three years, and doing extremely well over there, too. It's like we we say um, jokingly around. It's it's not just another Connecticut, you know. It's yeah. you guys haven't had a chance to try it. Um, I'll make sure you guys get some. That's but, the one. I, that's the one I haven't tried yet. Yeah, that that's a that's a really really nice Connecticut. Um, it's been doing very well for us recently. We got a, a 90 rating on it on the Toro size through Cigar Snob on the last issue, and it was unexpected. I, I really didn't expect it because there's so many Connecticut's out there. And um, and it's the more I smoke it, the more I end up liking that cigar. And I'm not I'm not normally a mild smoker. I like my medium plus. Um, every now and then a nice full body. But that mild cigar is just good at any time of the day. I and I call it mild plus. I don't even call it a mild because um, it consists of the uh, Honduran Connecticut wrapper with a Nicaraguan binder, and we use three different types of filler. Nicaraguan, Honduran, and Haltepec, which is um, a little region in Mexico, which is uh, what it's San Andres basically grown in the Haltepec region, and it just does something to that blend, and it, it takes it up from that mild, not not quite a medium, but it does have a lot of flavor. It's a very enjoyable stick. How many sizes is that available in? We have it in five: uh, Corona, Robusto, Torpedo, uh, Toro, and Gordo. 
So it's kind of the same thing when that when you guys brought that to the American market, like you added the Gordo and yeah, kind of months, you gotta have it, man. It's it's yeah. it's something that's that's a standard now in the, in the United States. Do you have your own fields? Yeah, we we just started. We, okay. We are in the process of uh, of growing our first crop right now. Where, where are you growing it? In uh, Hamastan. Okay, in Honduras. Yeah. Yeah, everything's we're, we're trying to keep everything as close as possible. Our yeah. fields are about I want to say half an hour driving distance away from our factory. A lot of more people are growing in in Honduras. I think people are really coming back to the country. Well, it's it's there's a lot of great land over there. I mean, yeah. it's, it's um it's a beautiful country. Aside from everything that the stigma it's gotten, the the violence and everything else, and the violence ratings it's got throughout the world for tourism, but other than that, man, it's 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 a really really nice country. It's got beautiful beautiful um, agronomy. I mean, it, you you go to all that land and it's vir- they have still so much virgin land out there, where there's no there's nothing grown. It's just it needs to be cleaned out and just start to grow. And it's it's yeah. incredible. And the soil quality there apparently is very very good. So the third line, um, this one's actually now become my favorite, uh, and I've had the Miro and the Placeris Reserve, and I haven't tried the Zapata yet, which I do need to try, but I've really started enjoying the Placeris Reserve right now, your box press. Um, again, what's kind of the meaning behind that line, and can you well, tell us a little more about it? Placeris is it's a line that we had in Europe, and we have it now here in the United States, too, if, if, um, if you're not familiar with it. Placeris is our short filler. It's our short filler sandwich. It comes in a can, in a, in a humidified can with a 25 count bundle. It's a very economical cigar. It retails for about 225, 250 a stick, and we have it in four sizes. Um, but when we initiated, we didn't have that. We, when we first launched, we had the Placeres Reserva. And Placeres is basically pleasure in, in Spanish. And Reserva is reserved. So since we had the Placeres line going on in Europe already, um, we couldn't release it under here without the reserve, so they was launched simultaneously in Europe and the United States with the reserve line. And in Europe originally, when they had it a couple of years back, it was a normal cigar. It was in box press, standard Habano wrapper, um, not what we have nowadays. We have now our Habano is, is from Jalapa, Costa Rican binder, uh, Nicaraguan, I'm doing in the fillers, and it's just such a great cigar. You know, dark chocolate notes, um, espresso in there, little semi-sweet, delicious bitterness with that dark chocolate notes that I like to say, at least on my palate, that's what I find on it. And it's such a pleasurable cigar, and in the box press format, I think it's a home run. I I really enjoyed that cigar. I... I, um... I, I, I was really smoking the mirrors a lot at first, yeah. and then I kind of went to this cigar in the last few weeks, and I knew you were going to be on the show, and I just really, really kind of exactly what you said. It was a, that chocolate flavor in there, right. but it's not a Maduro either, so no. it's kind of, yep. It's, it's darker. It's darker because um, one thing we, we strive, and, and, and I think one of our main goals when it comes to our blending and, and our construction on, on the cigars is we concentrate on flavor. Our, our big thing isn't strength. Uh, everybody's out there right now, and, and we're trying to do things a little bit different so we can stand out and, 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 and not follow the same path as everybody else. And everybody's concentrating on strength and strength. And I, and I personally feel, and, and talking to a lot of manufacturers as well as that, and, and, and a lot of people in the industry that just know about tobacco and cigars, I feel there's a trend that's coming now. It's, it's that strength kick. You know, People are starting to shy away from that. And they're starting to come back more into the, the naturalness of tobacco and, and looking for more for flavor and for, and for you know, consistency when it comes to those types of things. And a more pleasurable cigar than something that they're going to smoke and just knock out, you know, and, and just, I think you smoke a full body cigar for way too long or a strong cigar for way too long, it, ha- it ends up affecting your palate. Yeah. Do you think, do you think too many, do you think a lot of the manufacturers have been pressured over the years in making stronger cigars and bigger cigars, and, and because of that, they haven't been able to make what they wanted to make? I, I, I don't know if it's the pressure. I know it's the market. Yeah. Uh, and and the pressure could come in by just the people not buying the same cigars anymore, and, and we have to, as manufacturers, we have to stay, I guess, ahead of the trend yeah. and, and – and try to be innovative as much as possible with with the same products that everybody else has, 
and that's why you have so many blenders and and trying to be creative and coming out with new things and 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 just the market just went that way for some reason it just went for more powerful smokes more stronger cigars and and it's just it just happened and everybody had to follow suit yeah in order to stay in the game you know it was crazy when it happened i remember that happened it was nuts yeah so if i had to guess like the best selling cigar would it be your miro gordo i would say it was it would honestly be our toro okay the line. it would be the toro between they're they're like par they're they're running side by side and it's the miro mm-hmm. toro and the placer reserva colosos which is the toro size but but I, I agree, you know, with this Lancero, um, and I'm critical sometimes of Lancero. You you really get that Sumatra wrapper, but it's not that overwhelming Sumatra. It's got that right nice balance of spice, spice and sweetness on this. Um, right. And so this is a classic 38 ring gauge, correct? Yeah, yeah, it's a seven by 38, if I'm not mistaken. Seven and a half. A pigtail, seven and a half by by 38 with a pigtail. There's cool. there's two there's two types of Sumatra, you know, and, and, and Gabriel, you might agree with this and Coop, I don't know. You know, you notice you can get the Sumatra, which is very it's very spicy, it's very bold, it shows mm-hmm. that spicy Sumatra, and then you can have the other one which is a little bit more sweeter and it, it shows almost those Cameroon qualities as well, right. I think. And in, in our in our case we're using a Cadorian Sumatra and, yeah. and they're just they their Abano is incredible. Coming yeah. Out. Ecuador right now and and I think they're 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 doing some great things with the tobacco over there and um and I know that when when John came aboard the quality of things that were being done for Europe and the wrappers that they were using we were using always a, a Sumatra wrapper on the middle it just wasn't the quality that we have now yeah Th- those were some of the adjustments that we made because we knew that when we had to come into the United States we had to adjust some of the quality issues because in Europe they're so used to and I'm, I'm sorry for saying this I'm probably shooting myself in the foot but they're so used to Cuban cigars over there, okay? <laughs> and, what? Um, yeah. and 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 we all know it. You know, the consistency and construction qualities of Cuban cigars is not what it used to be. It's getting better though. It is. It is. It's definitely getting better from what I've seen. I just I actually got a Monte Cristo number two the other day that they brought for me from Spain, and um, I have it there in my humidor because I haven't been able to smoke it. But um, but I I was looking at it and the construction from what I. I saw a couple of years back was, yeah. was better a lot firmer, not as spongy as it used to be. And, and, but it, it is getting better, but that's what they got used to in Europe. And, yeah. and when we were going to launch in the United States, we knew we couldn't come out with that. You know, we had to have a consistent product with good construction. Yeah. You had to, you, you definitely had to change it. If you go from the European market to the U S market, it's, it's completely different. You have to change it. And the, the Miro is the Miro Lancero is a, is a great transition cigar. I mean, that's that's really it shows some of those qualities, but it also reaches out to that American market in a great way. Thank you. So, so Gabriel, we haven't really talked a little about your background yet. Um, you, what was your background prior to joining Coots in the cigar business? Well, I had I had a store. I had opened up a store with my partner um, here in Miami called the Neighborhood Humidor. Oh, I've been there. You have? I've been, I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I met Barry Stein there from Miami yeah. once. Uh, Barry, yeah, Barry, Barry, Barry was one of our regulars when I was part of it. I'm no longer okay. part of it. Okay, I didn't uh, know it was yours. I, yeah, I, I, I built that store. That was that was wow. the humidor and everything. Uh, yeah. That I'll go further into my background. Um, I was in construction before I got into the cigar industry, but I've been smoking cigars since I was 18 years old. I'm 35 now, and um, and I'll tell you, uh. With the way the economy went here, and, and I used to be in, in real estate and, and building custom homes and things like that, and then I got into the electrical side and specified in, into electrical contracting for a while, and, and when the market just took a, a dump in, when it came to construction and everything else, I got laid off, and um, I had the opportunity to open up the store. So I went ahead and opened up the store, and, and I fell in love with the industry. I went to Nicaragua for the festival before we opened up, and, um, and then I went to the IPCPR with my aunt. Uh, Berta, the Guayabera lady. Oh, uh, wait a minute. So she's your aunt? Yeah, she's my aunt. Wow, small world. I did yeah. not know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Berta, Berta's my aunt. Wonderful woman. <laughs> yeah, she's a great woman. And, and uh-huh. thanks to her, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly in this industry. Um, she introduced me to so many people, and I fell in love with the industry as, as a whole, you know, from the manufacturer side of things to the retailer side of things. And then um, when John had resigned, we had we had built a very, very strong friendship Um throughout the years and he came to me and he offered me the position uh with coots 
and honestly, uh, I thought about it for about 10 minutes. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, you know what? Let's do this. And, uh, definitely. It's, uh, he told me about the, 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 the company's background and the history behind the company and the financial backing that I had and everything else. And it was, to me, it was honestly a no brainer. Um, I didn't think it was going to take so much time away from the store that it took from me. And that's what made me decide to, to go ahead and turn it over to my partner. And he's doing great things with the store now. And, and it's just, uh, it's looking nicer and nicer every day. Um, but that's my background. I mean, I got into the retail side of things and now I'm on the, on the manufacturing side of things. And I've had a love, a love of cigars since I was 18. So your, your role is the operations manager. What, what exactly does that role now entail? What it manages does, operations. <laughs> what does it? It's uh, it's 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 honestly a two-man operation right now. John and myself. That's that's who run the American, and, and obviously the owners are in it, and they do they do their thing, the financial part of it, and, th- and things like that. But the, the daily operations, it's John and myself. And um, John's traveling throughout the nation, and I, I piggyback on that, and 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 I handle territories when he needs help. He's he's on one side of the country. And I'll jump onto another where, for events and 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 helping the reps out um, to develop more territory, open up more stores, building the relationships that we want to build with the customers, and um, and my involvement in the company has just in, increased so much. Um, I want to say after last year's IPCPR uh, to now, it's it's every day we're we're doing new things, and this year we're working on two blends that we're going to release. We we're just releasing now on the middle side. Uh, a new size where we're expanding the middle line, um, which I'll go on to that in a little bit. But um, I do everything from handling the marketing to a little bit of the financials of the company, dealing with the reps on a daily basis, processing orders, the shipping of the orders, talking to the customers. Um, it's just operations of the company, make, make, making sure that, that it, it moves forward. You guys have taken a grassroots approach too. I mean, I've seen. I mean, I've met you. You reminded me, I met you in Chattanooga, and you were in Charlotte. You've kind of really did this grassroots movement on, on the road to build this brand, too. So, and, and I know people are enjoying the cigars, so I think it's a great thing. Thank you. Thank you. Get the sticks so, in hands. Yeah. Yep. So, a little, you know, just a little more cover on the factory real quick. Large capacity out of that factory. Um, I, we, we heard from Brian Chinook that he's making his press wide at that factory, correct? Yep. Yeah. Are there any other projects you could talk about coming out of there? Not really. <laughs> okay. We are. We are. We are, <laughs> no. we are doing some private label things, but uh, mm-hmm. for the customer's request, it's, it's under, uh, we're not disclosing. So uh, we have to respect the customer's wishes and, and, and not do that. But, um, but yeah, we're, we're coming out with some really nice things out of there um, and, and, and doing things for ourselves too, man. It's, it's just uh, – we're we're at the bottom of this right now, and and we're growing, and we we have the capabilities of growing and and taking taking the U.S. by storm, I think, within the next few years. So um, so yeah, we're doing a lot of great things. We have the the amount of tobacco that we've um come have had access to now is so much that it's that the quality of tobacco has increased in our factory so much. And now we're starting to grow our own tobacco. And um, it, I, I see it personally as uh, endless opportunities for our company to grow. So the goal, the goal. I mean, it's safe to say, sounds like you guys are, are moving more and more towards a vertically integrated model. I mean, it's. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, I mean there's always going to be tobaccos that we can't grow ourselves, and and we're going to have to uh, outsource it. But um, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, what we want to do is we want to be able to control our base. You know, our, our fillers. Um, some binders, things like that, things that we use on a regular basis, you know, and, and things that are grown right there in, in Honduras and eventually we'll, we'll, we'll hopefully step into Nicaragua and start growing things over there as well. Um, but it's a step-by-step process. Excellent. Seth, did you have another question? I got a bunch of questions. Oh, I'll, I mean, let I go. I'll let you go. I'll let you go. I'll let you go. So I, I... going to tobacco, you know, you're in Honduras, you know, do you think you're going to st- – do a hundred and puro or i mean is that a goal have you thought about that have you guys thought about that um right now no honestly it's not something on our on our forefront and it's not something on our on our things that we want to come up with um our next thing that we're coming out with is a nicaraguan blend Mm -hmm. and we will be releasing that at ipcpr it's finalized already the blend okay um we're just working right now on packaging and everything else and you have a name for it hoots 
Oh, it's called Coots? It's the Coots Nicaraguan blend. We're, we're, we're releasing a line under the company name. I, and, and just as a, a marketing thing, we got to put the name with something, you know. And yeah. right, everybody's like, what's Coots? What's Coots? You know, and, and, and I don't even think I've, I've spoken about this, but Coots is basically tobacco and Mayan. Yeah. It's, oh, it's, wow. I, I didn't know that. Yeah. Which so is why you have the little Mayan logo on there. That's yeah. why it's, we have the little Mayan cigar or a pipe. I don't know what he's smoking, but. He's smoking something. <laughs> something. I mean, that's what we all are. So. Yep. Exactly. Um, are, are there sizes in mine? It looks like you're smoking a Corona, possibly. I'm, no, a I'm actually smoking a Toro. We have five you, sizes in mind already um, for the Coots. Looks smaller from where I am. Well, it's, I've already smoked a quarter of it, so maybe you're just a big guy. Who knows? <laughs> but um, but yeah, we have a uh, a couple of things coming there. We have a uh, uh, Momentos, what we like to call it. It's a four by forty-eight. Your standard Robusto, a standard Toro, um, a seven by sixty, a oh. Gordo Especial, um, and we had one more size, and I think it was four by fifty-eight. I think it was. I like that four by forty eight though. That's a great size. That's, that's a terrific. That's, oh my! Oh, that's this is the te- oh. that's teasing people that, right there. This is Gabriel. the meat right here. That is that that's is that's what terrific. we're releasing now in May. It's already in, It's already in production, and um, I'll send you guys some of these. I brought some back from the factory, so I can send it to to the bloggers and everything. What, what a great size! I think it's a great size. It's it's a short smoke. Anybody that's on their lunch break or whatever it is on a, on, a, on a short drive, a small commute, light it up, you get your fix and you get into work or whatever it is and, and you don't have to throw away half of a cigar. Yeah, I just yeah. was in Jacksonville and had to deal with that on yeah. my day job. <laughs> so I know. <laughs> it's a, it's, I mean, it's a great size. I love the 4 by 48s I think I, more, more people should be doing them. Mm-hmm. Man, that's exciting. Mm-hmm. So Nicaragua, you know, if you're going to – you know, when you talk rapper, everyone kind of has a preferred rapper of choice. You know, what would be your preferred rapper? If you're, I mean, you're going to make a cigar. What type of rapper do you want to use? And right now, and, and, and I'll tell you this, this was um, a good, uh, it was a combined work environment when we came out with the Coots blend. And I was really looking forward to making the Nicaraguan blend because right now my favorite thing is Nicaraguan tobacco. And um, it's just, I love the spice, um, the certain creaminess that you get from it, and the, the notes that, 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 com- that are coming out of the different regions of Nicaragua, and yeah. they're different. I mean, you, you smoke a to- uh, a, a, some tobacco from Esteli, it's, it's one thing. You smoke tobacco from Jalapa, Condega, they're all different in their own ways, and it's incredible out of the same country that you're getting all these differences in the tobacco, but we decided on this one to go with an Ecuadorian sum- uh, Albano. Ecuadorian Albano, yeah. And and to me that that rapper's phenomenal. Great rapper. And our other thing right now it's it's uh, San Andres Oscuro. There's okay. something else we're working on, which is gonna be the Miro Maduro that we're coming out with this year. Miro Maduro. What's your uh, least favorite rapper? Connecticut. Hey. <laughs> Honestly, it's um. I mean, it's it's just to me personally on my palate, it's, it's too bitter. Yeah. And um, done correctly, I mean, in, in a good blend, it's incredible. I mean, there's, yeah. cer- there's certain blends out there that, that I truly enjoy their, their Connecticut cigars. Um, CLE makes a great one. Um, ours is, is, to me, it's great. Uh, Fuente has a great one, too. I mean, so. I got to send you one that I think you would be wowed by. And I'm not going to tell you what it is until you after right. you smoke it. Okay. But Coop, you were going to ask a question about the Miro Maduro. No, no, I think, uh, yeah, so I was going to say the, the Miro Maduro, that was San Andreas? Yeah. That's, Any um, tar- it's actually got a name already. It's it's going to be the Miro Capa Negra. Oh, wow. Yeah. We yeah, don't even that? know how to spell that. So. No, <laughs> Capa, C-A-P-A, Negra, N-E-G-R-A. Oh, there you oh, go. Oh, Capanera. Oh, yeah, Capanera. I, I, I get that one. I was going to get that one. Right. I knew that. I knew that. I knew it's that. that. It's the pronunciation when it's it's yeah. a bunch of us North Carolinians that get Sorry. involved that it just gets <laughs> yeah, butchered. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and is that – so that's another IPCPR target yeah. release? That's that's our IPC – that's um, the Coots and the, the Miro Capanegra right now. Um, the Capanegra is just about we're, – we're about 95% um, on the blend already. Just a, a slight tweak to it that we're waiting for some aging on the cigar to try it again. Um, and we're already in the packaging stages and everything else. Uh, ring design is going to be very similar to the Miro now. 
Um, you're smoking actually on the Lancero. You have the old ring. That's um. Let me see if I can open this up so I can show you a little bit better detail. But we we modified the ring and we eliminated. If you look at that ring coop, uh, you see all that little tiny writing. Yeah. That's on there. That's that's been eliminated. Uh, we saw too many people squinting their eyes trying to read that and. The cigars made it easier made in a traditional way with a blend of uh, 100 percent natural tobaccos. So hey, you, the Europeans needed to read that for some reason. It's a totalmente amano thing. It's it's habanos, man. That's what's it's, getting you. Totalmente amano. It's, it's it's completely handmade. Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> <laughs> it's tricky. But let me see. Basically, our, the miro now is is just the logo. It's the ring. Same base. The the same uh, brown, uh, wine colored background with the gold tones and everything else. But it's just the logo, and the, the, we made the coins a little bit bigger uh, just for the presentation on it. To me, it looks great. It looks a lot better, more defined. Have you guys had – I mean, one thing we've heard throughout the last year is a lot of releases have been delayed because of packaging and bandings. Have you guys had any challenges with that over the last year? Not at all, thankfully. Um, you're, you're one of the few then, yeah, because I've been hearing it quite a bit. Well, everything everything we had was already done except for the, the changes that we did for the United States. And, and remember, when you order rings and stuff like that for your core lines, you order 50,000 to 100,000 at a time. So for you to run out of those rings, it's got to take a while. Yeah. And thankfully, it's, it's we haven't really had any issues, and we haven't had any wood issues either. You know, not, knock on wood, that we don't have any issues going forward. So, But uh, we, we do all our printing there in Honduras. Uh, with Luis Matias, I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He does a lot of work there for Alec Bradley, um, Pacencia, a lot of the people over there. And then we're doing some work also with the guys from Cigar Rings and DR. Yeah, I mean, for folks who, at home who haven't seen some of the the, the bands on these cigars, um, they're very they are they are they each have a very nice design. They're intricate, so you can see there was a lot of care put into those bands in terms of the, that Placeris Reserva one's my favorite too. That band, I just love it. Yeah, it's it's um it's something the the intricacies and, and the the owner Ramon Zapata he's big into those things and he, he he likes to follow suit with the old school Cuban rings with all that art and the foil and everything else and the colors and um and it's just something that we've done um, progressively through the company and then we see certain things that we like about it and we don't like and, and little by little we do little changes like if you notice when we first launched. And the Placera Receba ring, the Receba was a little white uh, cursive writing mm -hmm. on the first rings. Now, if you look at it, it's a bolder font, uh, block block style, filled in in complete foil. So it's easier to read. And we did the same thing with the Vistas. And, and everything's been little by little adjustments just to, to make it more eye appealing for the shelves and, um, and for the consumers to, to really recognize it a little bit better. So in terms of your favorite right now from Coots, what is your favorite cigar and what size? It would have to be the Miro Toro on a, on a daily smoke, just about. And um, right now I'm loving the Coots. It's, um, I'm, I'm out of my samples. I'm out of my, 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 <laughs> smoking my last one right now. And I'm, I'm praying to God, John just flew in from, from Honduras today. And I'm praying to God, he brought me back some more. <laughs> but, um. I was over there last week, and, and I, I ended up, I landed on Tuesday, Tuesday night, I started getting a tickling in my throat, Wednesday I woke up with a throat infection, I couldn't smoke for the whole week, and, um, but I brought back all my samples, and I've been smoking them from the weekend forward, and I'm out, I'm done. <laughs> that, that happens a lot here on Stogie Geeks, like, uh, the samples will come to me, and I'll, I'll smoke them, <laughs> and they won't get to the other hosts, but the, the other hosts did get Miro Lanceros, and, 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 uh, I've told them they're going to smoke them, and they'll talk about them on the show as well because I sent them some. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, in terms of do you smoke anything else that's not a coot cigar that you enjoy? Yeah, I do. I smoke a lot of cigars, man. And um, when I used to be in the store, I had access to just about everything. Um, now it, it happens to be when I'm traveling and I go into a store and I see something new or I'm talking to other manufacturers and they're like, here, try this. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you got to try this one. And we're trading cigars and, and events, especially like the one we did at Light Up, 
that was just a, a, a trade fest for, for my personal humidor. Um, but I'm a big fan of um, uh, my girlfriend's cigar, which is the Echicera. Chris, your girlfriend? I'm just kidding. I knew that. That's, <laughs> that's uh, to me, that's a great, great Nicaraguan puro. It's, it's delicious, solid medium, smoke at any time of the day. Um, and and I'm, I'm big into the Toro size on that cigar. Uh, one of my other favorites is the Casa Cuba that uh, Fuente recently released. I was able to smoke that originally about three years Her ago. Cin unique cigar. It's a yeah. unique cigar. Yeah. And, and I, I smoked one of the first batches that Cynthia actually gave me, Cynthia Fuente, about three years ago before they even mentioned the release. And I had no idea what it was, and I fell in love with it at that point. Um, what else do I like to smoke? Um, Don Carlos. Uh from Fuentes, delicious, Opus, obviously, Opus Lanceros or Petit Lanceros, and um, I prefer to age them about a year or so before I smoke them. Yeah, the, the other co-hosts are big Opus uh, guys, they're going to be bummed they missed this now, they would have taken you on a tangent for about 20 minutes on Opus. The so. angel uh, shit that they came out with this year to me is phenomenal. I phenomenal. just smoked it, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I really it's, enjoyed it's it. It's not your typical Opus, though. It's, it's, it's just... It, but no, to it's, me, it, it, it's kind of... I called it the undercrown version of the Opus X, and that's not meant to be a knock, but that's how they I, made it. And it's a different cigar. It just comes it out is, to be a different... Yeah. But it's delicious. Absolutely delicious. It's an interesting way of putting it, Coop. I never thought about it like that. Oh, that's what they're doing. With it. It's essentially different priming, but it's a different cigar. I mean, it was. I just enjoyed it a lot. So Seth, any you have any questions you want to get in? Or, um, I got I, I got distracted there. I mean, this is gosh. He talked about his sticks. I'm really interested. Yeah, Nick Rog went tobacco. It, you know, is there a region that you guys are focusing on? Uh, I know with the the coots. I mean, is it all over? Or are you more Jalapa or there? No, there's there's um there's Condega, there's Esteli in there. There's um a little bit of Jalapa. There's Honduran in it. Uh, yeah, but it's about eighty percent. Nicaraguan tobacco in this cigar. Yeah. That's why we're calling it the Nicaraguan edition because the wrapper is Ecuadorian and then one of the other fillers is is um is Honduran. Yeah. And it's just just something that we did and and we're just we don't specify on any region in particular. We just play with the different tobaccos till we come out with something that we think is different than what's on the market currently. And um and that's what that's what we're focusing on. We're not trying to to step on anybody's toes, coming out with something like anybody else's. We, we're trying to be innovative as much as we can and coming out with our own blends and and, and trying to push forward with that. And, you know, and, and you mentioned you put Honduran tobacco in there, which which I'm a, I am really like because I think Honduran tobacco can really pair and, and balance out some of those Nicaraguan qualities. And before you said you just kind of – Put it a little bit in the filler, you know. Did you have mostly Nicaraguan and realize maybe it was a little too much, and then you wanted yeah. to put some Honduran in there, basically? A little creaminess, and, yeah. Uh, and that's definitely what we got out of that that Honduran that we put in there. And it's definitely a lot creamier now, and and it's just a solid, solid medium plus cigar with great, great, great flavors and aromas. It's it's. I mean, I've given it to a few people to smoke since I've been here since uh, from since Saturday, and just everybody that smoked a cigar just says almost exactly the same things I say and it's just about a cigar that anybody could pick up and truly enjoy it's not offensive at all in any way it's not offensive on the palate, it's not offensive on the nose um, we were actually in a shop last night a buddy of mine that I respect very much it's got a great palate this guy I mean if, if, if he hears that pig ears is the next delicacy from god knows where he's eating pig ears you know this guy <laughs> has, has developed his palate so well and um, and I truly respect him for it. And he could find certain notes that when he tells you that he found this note and you sit back and you try to analyze it, if you don't have a developed palate, and I definitely don't have a developed palate the way he does, but if he, he brings it to your attention, you can definitely see the similarities that he's talking about. He's talking about, about yeah. So, um, so, yeah, I mean. We're looking forward to it. <laughs> I went on and on and I forgot the question. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of got lost in there too. We were talking about Nicaraguan, Honduran tobacco and yeah. blending, and you answered it, you answered it, and, and more. And then we started talking about pig ears. Exactly. So, <laughs> Coop's enjoying the Lancero, which is oh, a great I really, Lancero. I really love that Lancero. 
So, so with Gabriel, just for I know we have some folks in our chat room. Um, where can they find Coot Cigars right now? Are they, um, you know, well, if, if they visit the our website, go to coots.com. We have an authorized retailer section, and it's got a Google map, and it shows all the points. And then on the bottom, there's a there's a there's a table that that's divided by state, and they can look in their states. And I try to update it as quickly as possible. Um, if anybody has any questions whatsoever and, and they know of a cigar shop that's interested in it or anything, shoot me an email, info at coots.com or sales at coots.com, whichever one. And I'll, I'll answer them right away because I get all those emails on my phone. So, Good for you for updating that. There, I think there's some manufacturers and companies that just kind of – why they have a website – confuses me because they don't ever do anything in their defense i mean there's so many things to do on a day in, in a company okay. and sometimes you forget that you have this this media source that's that's yours and you know and, and you got to keep the public aware and, and everybody concentrates more on the social media side of things and they forget about the website yeah well so, i mean sometimes companies just don't have the 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 capable people to run a website on a daily basis and things like that and they outsource it and they forget and then it's I mean if any of you have dealt with web developers before you, it's not an easy task you know I deal with Coop every day and that's pretty uh, difficult so you know I was at a joke I said I talked to you Seth more this week than I talked to my wife actually oh <laughs> that was scary that was scary that's not a good I'm, Coop I'm honored man I'm uh, honored. I didn't say that was an honor <laughs> it was just kind of a strange sequence of events this week <laughs> anyway, so Gabriel, this kind of will wrap it up. Um, in terms of, you know, who have you, you know, in the cigar business, you know, are there some folks you've kind of looked up to, role models, heroes, or whatever you want to call it? Man, um, there's so many, and, and, and just stepping into the industry now as, as a rookie, I like to say that I am in, there's so many people to look up to in this industry. It's it's ridiculous. And, and I'm talking about from small guys to, to, to huge people in this industry the Fuente family they're, they're incredible people um, just their, their family approach to things and their business approach to things are an incredible thing um, s small guys like Skip Martin I mean you, you see him doing incredible things um, in this industry now he's got his 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 own factory going and, and everything else and and in, from the retailers point I mean you look at store owners and, and how passionate they are about their their local markets and everything else it's I can't really pinpoint specific people because the industry in, in, in an entirety and, and the camaraderie that's in this industry is incredible. And everybody's willing to give out a lending hand and a helping hand and, and, and everybody likes to work together to help each other out, man. And it's, it's a beautiful thing about this industry. Yeah, and I mean, Seth and I have talked a lot about that too. And we, we try to make media take the same point of view as well, you know, just kind of co uh, cooperation, if you, if you may. Right. Yep. <laughs> Gabriel, um, really appreciate the time. I know we went a little over. Um, you, thanks for all the support you've given us. And, you know, definitely looking forward to some of the great things you guys have coming out. And um, we'll definitely have you back on the show again sometime later this year. Definitely. Whenever you'd like, man. If I'm available, I'll be more than happy. And I'm sure our, our, our calendars are, will join up somewhere. Yep. Thank you very much. Great segment. And keep up the good work. Thank thanks, you so Gabriel. Much. I appreciate okay. it from Thank you guys you. on a daily basis, though. Thank you. We're going to take a three-minute break, and then we'll be back with our Smokes of the Week. <laughs> 